Warning, the voices heard in this video are made synthetically using artificial intelligence. Nothing in this video reflects anything actually stated by the real-life individuals involved. This video is for entertainment purposes only, and serious political content will be avoided for that purpose. Enjoy! Bonjour, boys. It's your badass bard-loving Biden, ready to beat some baddies. Sheesh, bringing some bardic bars early, Biden. Impressive display of mid-sleepy. When is the SoundCloud dropping that will get 50 views, 49 of which will be you? You're just mad that I am about to outcook you. Sure thing, Joe, I started my episode by killing the last god of the elven pantheon. And now, during your episode, you're going to bully some short dudes who smell like rocks and are like a third your size. So get on my level, Sleepy. Sure, Donald, I will go install a slide to lower to your level. Let me just go find a mage to die three times too. Anyways, there is crime happening, time to put a stop to it. Knowing Joe's track record, he is probably going to pay them off or befriend the criminals instead of being a badass renegade president. This is all I have right now. It's going to be a spicy episode today. Viewers hope you brought popcorn. Remember, Joe, it's important to... To intimidate them, not kill them. So I have access to this guy as a merchant for the supplies and shale gift. I know Barry. Oh, shit. Never mind. Big Dog didn't know you got it like that. Once a month, this dude actually takes his meds and becomes Barack's apprentice on game knowledge. So despite this dude's kind of bad voice acting, this is really good set dressing for one of the three main quests in Orzammar, dealing with the Carta. The game designers added several encounters that a player is bound to run into while handling the main quest. The first was Ogren's introduction from last episode, and now this Carta shakedown, which players will encounter on their path to do either of favors for our chosen king. And it's not a forced cutscene, so if someone wants to skip it, they can, but or it's more rewarding to do it for lore. This dude is surprisingly verbose for a dust town thug. Whoa, whoa. All right. Just like that, I saved the store using my color of the Supreme die. King. Remember, viewers, stars. if you vote for me in 2024, I will defend your small business from being invaded by three foot tall dudes with face tattoos. Vote for me in 2024, I and I will give every American like citizen a Morgan or Alistair body pillow dealer's choice on that one. I'm showing you the God, the election cycle really took a dive for. since I, I stopped you. running. It's just a different battlefield, Barry. Anyways, let's give the giant rock a smaller, shinier rock. Heading straight for the tavern now, you're since that's where Belen's other noble is. I don't care if you're also, apparently, this like girl actually brother. liked Tryon. I didn't know that dude actually had people who liked him. I don't think there's any evidence he was yes, a good person. But she's well. saying he just tipped good. Him, you know if that's all it took, we I would be giving you twice what he paid but I guess refuse our heavy pockets and stay yeah, broke. Yeah, this is the one and only person that comes to Tryon's defense here. Well, what do you want here. I guess besides our dad, this was the only person who cared he died. Also, it's weird, she says, she expected Easy more from us, but we don't meet Everything her in the origin at all, so why should we really care about that? Just another random NPC whose opinion doesn't matter. I'm sure we have a few of them in here that you want us to talk to. Just three, actually, and one of them is Ogryn. And another one we have to do for Balan's quest, so it's essential anyway. Let's get the main quest done first. This here is Lord Helmy, and I find him one of the more interesting dwarfs in this game. He has very liberal views compared to the average dwarf, as he believes that many of the lower castes should be treated more as equals and that many could be just as skilled of fighters or politicians as, as the nobles, no. well, which makes him more of a black sheep among the other members of the assembly. You know, In addition, he is the son of Lady Helmy, who we met we gave at the dinner in, in, in our assembly. origin, Orzumar who warned us about Lord Dace no and the brother of another Helmy, who I fought in the proving, in our origin as well. So if he has such non-traditional views, why doesn't he just support Balin, who promises oh, to break traditions? Well, for well it seems like he is heavily he influenced by his family day. still, as I imagine so most dwarf nobles are. And given his mother was family friends with our family, I imagine his family would want to side with Endrin's choice, which was Harrowmont. You know? Given what he says here, now it seems he believed Harrowmont to be the more honest choice as well. Damn, I actually feel kind of bad for deceiving this guy. This quest takes a different vibe when you find out the documents are fake. I would have thought you would I be used to deception, Joe. You have been a politician for twice as long name. as either of us. They're all the same. Just not used to it, Donald. I guess three marriages makes you an expert in deception, huh? How oh, low blow, Joe. I think it's important to note that both main quests will direct you to tapsters at one point, and it's excellent quest design that they do. In addition to having Helmy placed here to give us insight 
into you dwarven politics. Like we also have the Nervous Those Adventure, you know, which starts friends. the unbound quest that will span the entire game, having you. us find notes in two other Once main quest in dungeons story, in order to fight a powerful demon boss. See? Most importantly, though, is of course the fact our future pen, companion Ogryn is here, and we not only can learn more eyes. about him, but Take we will them. also get special dialogue out. later if we talk to him here, I since won't. we can vow to help find Branka even before we are want? sent out to do so. Oh, Knowing our trend of things, I'm the going to be the one to have yes. to kill the demon the boss at the end of Unbound. Hey, now you're breaking the magic Donald. Also, it's crazy even Ogre recognizes us from our origin. This origin really put its best foot forward in making everyone recognize you. Huh, it's weird. He thinks we are working for Harrowmont already. We only talked to Doolin. We haven't actually done either quest to side with a king choice yet. I think the game just defaults to Harrowmont and Ogren's dialogue. If you haven't made a choice yet, since the game does lean slightly more towards siding with Harrowmont on the surface. Did we cover Paragons already, Barak? It's been like eight episodes since the first episode. We did remember you had that whole plan on being Paragon of America Donald. Uh, All right, course. thanks for the reminder. Being That's Paragon still in motion. I just have the election to win first. Why do you well, I definitely don't think we have talked about Branca Nobody yet if you want to start the app, Barry. Fair, I guess we can give a refresher for the viewers. Branca is the first Paragon in over four generations. She became a Paragon by developing a coal that was smokeless when burned, which meant smiths could use it in their windowless caves without getting lung cancer. When she rose to Paragon, she was still married to Ogryn, but it was an arranged marriage back when the two were just a smith and a proving fighter. Now that Branca was a walking god in Orzammar, she began to resent Ogryn, and Ogryn couldn't really cope with being thrusted into noble life and the responsibilities that entailed. So he began drinking. Me, Eventually, Branca, being a highly intelligent smith, began obsessing over the lost He's anvil of the, the void throne. and Is took her it? whole house on expedition to find it, except Ogryn, because too Branca hated him by this late. point. That but was two years ago, and now, no you one has seen them since. There is more to the story, have. but your we will cover that later. This. If Branca hated our goat Ogryn so much, why not just get a divorce? I know this might sound crazy to you since you have had ten of them, Donald, but this is a traditional society. I'm pretty sure divorce only exists when your spouse is dead. Man, you're really testing it today, Sleepy. It's all the bleeding same to me. Barkeep. Crazy to be back right where we began, boys. It was only a couple months ago Barry paid off some dudes in approving to win and then had a three-way which all launched us into becoming the hero of Ferelden. Jesus Christ. For the last time, we were set up by Belen because we were a popular son of the king, not because Trian and Belen were jealous of us banging two girls at once. Man, Barak, I thought you were our lore master. How did you fumble that knowledge this hard? Oh, right, boys. I remember a couple months ago when we were in this tunnel, you guys mentioned an anime. Goblin Slayer, well, I had Hunter load up an episode for me. Oh, oh God. God. Um, uh, and what did you think, Joe? It was kind of boring. I don't know what you two were on about. This plucky gang of adventurers go and kill some goblins in a cave. Honestly, they were walking in a dark cave for like three minutes, just yapping. I felt like I was watching Barry play this game, so I fell asleep, and next thing I knew, some armored dude was killing goblins to heavy metal. It was kind of cool, but I don't know why they were hyping up killing those little guys so much. I give it a six out of 10. Joe, you slept through literally more than half the damn episode, and you're rating it. My God, you are such okay, a- Okay, Donald. Honestly, that is the best case scenario for everyone, Joe sounds like. It's not your speed. And you don't have to watch any more episodes or read the light novels or manga either. Oh, uh, yeah, good call, Barack. You both are still acting says as hell, but whatever. You boys were right about Shale Stone Aura. I was kind of bummed I couldn't switch to win instead, but this aura makes these darkspawn easy mode. I didn't even have to play it safe in that fight. Well, Joe, I am glad you like the Stone Aura strat, but I guess you didn't notice you can actually change your party members in the city of Orzammar itself. So actually it's pretty easy to swap out companions here as opposed to the circle tower where we are locked in. Oh wait, we can change our party? Damn it, I wish I knew that I got to be at my best and have healing grandma on my side. Joe, you just said you are enjoying using stone aura as your medication already wearing off? I know what I said, but the batty win is just always better. She can heal us and still output some damage. Also, like I said, she is a 10 out of 10. That's fair, Joe. I did say Shale was an option to replace support magic, 
but that doesn't mean it is always the best idea. Shale still can't heal or stun enemies. So while Shale is an option to replace regular support magic, it really depends on the Warden's playstyle. Going hard while pounding gamer sups is exactly how BioWare intended to use the big girl's aura. It's big dick energy stone aura only. Overcompensation energy more like. Yeah, I guess you need some of that extra DPS since you are pulling the entire Darkspawn army on our little guy right now. Jesus, they really pulled an entire second encounter in the same fight. What kind of bullshit is this? If you were more careful positioning our warden, you wouldn't have pulled additional dark spawn to us, Joe. That is your skill issue right now. I know we have better equipment, but you still have to be optimal. There's some fights that can clap you if you are not careful. Well, this still ended up the same way despite the hiccups. Like I said, last episode, I am him. Never ever punish. This dude has the luck stat maxed out since 2020. Well, either way, Joe, go ahead and loot around this area specifically. This area has the rune stone for Alistair and that bloody sack there to start a quest in the deep roads later. The rune stone is right in the locked chest in the center and the bloody sack is obvious. Well, that doesn't sound ominous as hell. It's just another demon boss. I'm starting to notice a trend with BioWare's side quest. Anything that involves gathering notes or books or body parts is automatically a damn demon boss waiting to happen. I think Varric makes a joke about that in two, but you are absolutely goddamn right on that one, Donald. I never said everything in this game was wholly unique. Oh, hey, it's the cave dinosaurs again. These guys would be kind of cute if they didn't grind stone with their teeth. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about these enemies. On one hand, they don't do that annoying, overwhelmed bullshit. But on the other hand, they don't really do anything that has any threat to them. I mean, has anyone struggled with a damn deep stalker even on Nightmare? That's fair. They really don't stand out or have any difficulty to them. They are a little better in Inquisition just because the engine could spawn an actual horde of them instead of just like 10 or so. But even in that game, they aren't a challenge, but they just feel more thematically appropriate because of the increased numbers. I mean, the lore you gave on them is pretty dope though, Barry, it's just I wish their gameplay reflected that. Yeah, given the lore, Deep Stalkers have, they could have been a very memorable enemy if the budget for Origins was higher. The Codex says these guys not only burrow under stone with their teeth, but also can curl up into balls small enough to resemble rocks, both of which set them up as ambush predators that could have offered memorable gameplay moments in the deep roads. God, I would have thrown them a couple bands if they could do that anything to break away from the tedium of killing 1,000 darkspawn in a row. Plus, if they made them as memorable as Fallout 4 enemies, it would have been well worth it. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Billionaire. Maybe you can help out those struggling developers working on Dread Wolf or Mass Effect 4 so that it can come out in the next decade or so. Maybe if it was the golden age of Bioware with Guider and the OG crew of Origins and Mass Effect 1, but there is barely any remaining crew, so they are going to need to prove themselves before I dive into my McDonald's or golfing funds. That's my self-care after all. Yeah, most people just get a massage or a nice steak, but I guess heart failure and millions of dollars in golf fields work too. My Obama in Christ, My when what? you're a true top dog, you need the true peak of self-care. I wouldn't expect your nerdy ass to understand that. Jesus Christ, I don't even know what that sentence even means. Anyway, Joe, go ahead and skip past days here. We should explore the rest of the cave. I'm sure there is some interesting loot and battles further in. Sounds good, Barry. Let's get it. Okay, breaking news. Obama couldn't have been more wrong the last 20 minutes. There's been nothing but more of these deep stalkers and a few low tier loot drops. There was one fight with some dark spawn that almost looked dicey, but really all of it was so tedious. We decided to skip it and just show this one fight to get the point across what we went through also. At least shale levels up here, so that's exciting. Joe, go ahead and just dump it all in con to make his aura and tankiness better. Yeah, okay, unlike these two, I can humble myself a bit a and admit I messed up. I thought there would be an interesting I fight or something, but I was wrong. I heard but we did get some money, and that is going to be important for the Lyrium smuggling quest coming up this episode or next. We do need about 20 more gold or so before we have enough to buy it. Skill issue. Donald, this is a team effort that means it is overall all of our skill issues, not just berries. 
Hey, I've been on the side quest grind during my episodes. Last I checked, Joe, you mostly do main quest stuff, which doesn't make us nearly enough money, so get on my level, Sleepy. All right, ladies, we are all pretty and broke, so let's just make up and get back on the grind. I think this is one of the first dwarves that does not recognize us. You think he would because there was a dace at our coronation dinner as well. You have a point there, Joe, but you can't expect every single dialogue line to change, I suppose. Dace is going to give us a quick teleport back to Orzammar. So why don't we go and confront our brother? Hell yeah, this is like the culmination of everything we went through in our origin. You are getting a real treat today, Joe. Believe me, if there was a renegade interrupt, I would take it. Who would have imagined? My big brother returned from the grave, and with the might of the Grey Wardens behind him. I could hardly believe it when Vartag said you wished to help me regain the throne. I'm sure most of our companions are confused as hell right now, but the main thing I think every player can think to ask first is why Belen did this. To be fair, our guy didn't even try to turn the assembly on Trianne. I think he did that mostly himself by having his head murderer. up his own ass and acting like he was already king. You know it's bad when even Donald identifies someone else with a head up his ass. So, how truthful do you think that story Bellin tells here about our father poisoning his older brother is? It doesn't feel like something Endrin would do, but granted, maybe his old age tempered him. I mean, Bellin won a gold medal in gaslighting. I highly doubt what he says is the truth, or at least the whole story. Our father's older brother could have somehow been worse than trying, or maybe even evil. Father died of Sounds like our dad may have had a grind set of his own. I mean, Pellin certainly got it from somewhere. But yeah, as much as I love him, I doubt he is giving us the full story here. And I also, hell I yes, Pellin speak that politics. truth, brother. Fuck now the inefficient assembly and Congress. Some life. intrusive thoughts won over there, Donald, but I guess I will stroke his ego some to gain his trust. It will be a surprise tool that will help us later. No, it won't, Joe. We are staying true to our brother and Grind Balin. Think of the connections. I could legit care less about political connections that a snake is offering he can catch these hands. Don't be a rat, Sleepy. This vote will be the second most important vote of the year. You can't bribe YouTube comments like in 2020. I have no power to send the troops you need. You've seen for yourself, the city is a slaughterhouse. Criminals run lawless. I could never hold the throne if I allowed such chaos. It's still up in the air. Donald, remember to keep commenting, viewers. We will even count repeat comments in new episodes. Well, guess it's time to show the viewers that Joe Biden is tough on crime. You know, as long as it isn't any crime committed by dudes named Hunter. Hey, man, leave the kids out of this. I don't clown your dozen children. Yeah, come on, Donald. We had some ground rules. Fine, fine. Sorry, I just want to defend my bro, Balin, here. Uh, Balin, the guards treat castless like a disease rather than human beings. Why would they cooperate with you? Bro was like, well, I am banging one, so why don't you all snitch on the crime boss that pays you a living wage and can kill you any time they want? Oh, yeah, we can't meet Rika unless we are a dwarven commoner, can we? Yeah, for some reason, she just doesn't exist otherwise. Maybe without her sibling being alive, things didn't work out for her the same way like maybe she lost the baby due to grief and Balin kicked her to the curb. That's a fair point, Joe. Don't forget to go back to ask Balin to help take in our son if we elect him. We can ask him after we elect him king, but roleplay-wise, it makes You're sense to ask now. So obviously no one believed Marty's one son was ours. How do dwarfs inside. normally establish paternity if it's so ingrained in their importance in society? Well, well most houses are pretty open to accepting children if there is even a chance it is theirs, since obviously palace. dwarfs have a birth now, rate problem. More able bodies willing to fight the spawn is a good thing. So I think it's common to be a don't ask, don't tell policy. Anyways, let's explore around our old home a little. I wouldn't dawdle. The longer you take, the more both Jarvia and the Darkspawn build their power. Damn, imagine breaking into a home trying to make a quick buck, and you immediately run into a badass tainted warrior who has killed a god and is armed with a seven-foot-tall golem to boot. Yeah, compared to what we normally fight, I almost feel bad for these guys. Now, they can suck it. They could have surrendered or ran away, but they were prepared to spin the block on us just because we are a witness. Plus, I don't know how stealthy they were trying to be. Here they dug a damn hole to the palace and had like 10 guys. At best, a few of them were not going to make it out of here alive. This guard has to be either minding his own business or deaf, dumb, and blind because how did he not hear swords cutting armor and dudes dying like 10 feet from him? Bro said I am on break. They can sort their shit out. I do have to give some credit here, though. Orzammar really does have quests around every corner, speaking of time. 
to fight another one of these revenant boys. Come on, Obama, do lore. Donald, stop poking me with a stick and I will tell you. So these revenants are corpses that are possessed by demons. Technically, any demon or sprit can possess a body, but when a desire or pride demon possess a dead body, instead of them becoming an abomination like Uldred, they will become a revenant. These glass vials contain away demons, and there are six of them in Origins. For us to find one of them, Joe, already fought in the Circle Tower. One of them appears only in a Daenerim random encounter and has a unique and really good shield on him. So we will be on the lookout for that later. Also, they are counted as undead. So once we get our anti-undead sword for the second half of the game, they are getting clapped. Good shit, Barack. So yeah, viewers like the video or we will turn your grandma into a revenant. Honestly, that might be an upside to some people. Donald, these guys are pretty edgy looking. Just focus on beating him, Joe. I've noticed in both fights, you keep using cold spells on him despite being immune to cold damage. Sounds like a skill issue to me. I'm mostly doing that, trying to freeze him, Donald. It's a valid strat. Also, it doesn't really matter. Shield's aura makes us so immune to his damage, so we are good to go. Oh boy, drama alert. Incoming time to break the news to Liliana Joe. Wait, no, baby. It's not what you think. It wasn't me. You're the only one I need. Joe, what the hell are you doing? We had a deal. Sweet pea, please me and Morgan. We're just having a conversation. I never slept with her. Joe, buddy, seriously, why are you stalling here? Think of Meryl. All right, boys, I admit it. I can't do it. I know we agreed on Morgan's romance, and I have made my peace with losing Liliana, but I can't break up with her myself. I'm only a man. I can't hurt the feelings of this 2D goddess. Pathetic. She is really just ones and zeros, and you can't just man up and stand your ground. Oh, come on, Donald. Imagine if we had to break up with Morgan if we chose Liliana instead. <laughs> well, glad I'm not alone in my feelings. Barry, just break it to her next episode, okay? I can't stand to do this right now. Sure thing, old buddy. I will salvage what I can. Anyways, boys, the reason I'm talking to her here is I wanted to ask her about Orzammar because that can start a small side quest to look for nugs and eventually get a pet nug for her in Dust Town, which I am about to head to anyway. So the order is you either have to have 80 plus approval, which is friendship level, or be in a romance with her, which we still are thankfully. Total bullshit. Shush, Donald, I am telling the viewers about Liliana. So once you meet either of those two requirements, talk to her in the city of Orzammar and she will bring up her opinions on Orzammar and add that she would like the nugs as a pet. Just ignore me. Then you can talk to the idle dwarf in Dust Town and pay him some silver for a pet nug. You'll see me do it here in a bit. Bro only has yap material for mages and Liliana gets some new material. We are almost 10 goddamn episodes in. Says the dude who is still gooning for Morgan and doing tricks on the human noble origin 10 episodes in. Yeah, both of you need to realize that y'all don't have any leg to stand on here. We are in act two of this playthrough. Let's start fresh. Donald, did you hear something? I think it's some dude yapping about how the Feraldon's banner color signifies elven oppression or some shit, I don't know. I have been tuned out since he started yapping about Belen's betrayal in episode one. Well, both of you can eat a dick then, and here I was about to praise both your waifus. But instead, why don't we hear some of Leliana's lore instead? Joe is about to trigger the next chain to start her quest. Not it's crazy we have the president of the Liliana I'm fan club and we are just now Georgia. getting ready to start her quest. Some of them are I take my time with the ladies, involved. Donald, unlike your ass speed running to get the witchessy. Many use the two words minstrel and bard interchangeably, but to do so in Orlais would cause misunderstanding. Bards are minstrels and more, spies as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who Bards they being handled as spies focusing on charm, seduction, and charisma has been the no biggest breath of fresh air for the bardic class of D&D this century. Seriously, most D&D players treat bards the like they are just the horny pop stars with magic. Giving them a role bright. like this in, public, in the world of Dragon Age is top tier. I have been trying to get so George to implement that secret, for the bard class in his homebrew world for a few other. years now. This doesn't sound like a Dragon Age rant anymore, Barack. This sounds personal. Look, I talk about Dragon Age since it's relevant for the content, seems, but I am a multifaceted nerd. I could fill volumes on obscure fantasy lore. Dragon Age is just my favorite. I... 
Look, that was a nice oh yop, Barry, but barge rolling to seduce the dragon is still a classic meme that will never leave the tabletop community. I'm surprised Baldur's Gate 3 didn't have it. The fact they didn't gives me hope for the future. Well, I'm just doing this quick side quest here. It's probably the shortest in the game. I just run over here and grab a nug and boom, easy money and XP. This quest can't have good returns. Why do it, Joe? I wasn't sure if this also helped trigger getting the Liana Pet Nug quest, so I figured I would take the 30 seconds to do it. Did you boys know that the first dwarf to eat Nug was a stranded soldier in the deep roads who ate it out pure desperation and found out they were delicious? When his house found him in the deep roads, finally he had actually gained weight from all the Nugs he ate. The assembly made him a paragon for this, for simply finding a new food source, which is probably the fastest speed run of paragon status in the history of Orzammar. Damn, some people have to be a brilliant smith and researcher or stop a blight to become paragon. And then there's some dudes who discover Nug Nuggets and become a living god on the spot. Bro was the original built different dwarf. Man, there is so much going on in Orzammar. Look here, we got some Harrowmont simps ready to jump us for siding with Balin. People not happy with election results and attacking others in the street? Sounds like they are taking a page out of your January 6th playbook, Donald. And just when we were getting along too, Joe. Honestly, I am kind of indifferent about all these encounters. On one hand, they show how chaotic the city of Orzammar is without a king and how passionate they are about elections. But on the other hand, these January 6ers literally guard every important place in the city I haven't gone two minutes without fighting something now. I guess we are just rolling with that title. It might be a little annoying, Joe, but it does really help the world building. Maybe they should focus less on world building and more on housing building so there's less eyesores and angry people attacking us in the streets. Even once we reach Dust Town, we are still getting ganked in the streets. Looks like the average town in Oklahoma. I bet the rent is 20 bucks a month and a shuck of corn. I assume this is just how you two poor people live your lives since leaving the White House. Donald, none of us are poor. Do you just think anyone who's not a billionaire is poor? Yeah, pretty much. Good God. Okay, Joe, do you have a comment question prepped? We could use a distraction here. I got you, Big B Barry. So boys questing in Orzammer and enjoying its banger musical theme and the amazing attention of detail to this city's culture by making three visually distinct districts in this city has really got me to appreciate Bioware's cities in this game. So viewers, comment question of the day, what is your favorite Dragon Age city, either in game or just in lore, I won't restrict to just in game ones. Mine would definitely be Kirkwall. Ooh, the switch up. Joe, why did you hype up Orzammar just to pick Kirkwall? Because shut up, anyway, Kirkwall is such a endearing city in the Dragon Age series. It is the city that we spend the most time in out of every other city in all three games. We become engrossed in the political and social structure of the city, and the city has a nice melting pot of cultures. Being Tevener in origin, but having a leadership structure like Orlais, and finally having influence from other free marcher inhabitants, but also a large Ferelden influence caused by Hawk in the Fifth Blight. Kirkwall's districts are also very visually distinct, just like Orzammar. The city felt more like a home than I have seen most other video game cities do, and while most of that is because of the top-tier companion writing the atmosphere of Kirkwall still adds to that. Also, the fact that we can see the city change over 10 years makes it more memorable to players. Good points, Joe. That is probably the best case for Kirkwall I have seen someone make. As for me, it's really tough to pick one, but I would have to give it to Antiva. Obviously not for any in-game reasons, as we haven't visited Antiva yet, but lore-wise, I find the city very fascinating. Being a city that is functionally run by wealthy merchants, assassins, and pirates, rather than any formal government or monarchy like most nations. They do have a king and a royal family, but that family holds very little actual power and are mostly just figureheads for foreign relations. The true power of Antiva is their mercantile strength and their deadly assassins, making them a wealthy city run by assassins almost, and assassination is as common as rain. Also, the city, the way Zevran describes it, at least always gave me early Assassin Creed vibes, where a Renaissance era city features assassins jumping from roof to roof. I really hope more of the northern cities are explorable in Dreadwolf and not just a market district and a palace like Orlais. Got to love the dig at Orlais there, but good shit, boys. Anyways, even if your starting argument was deceptive as hell, Joe, I still appreciate the fact you didn't pick Orzammar so that I can pick a different answer to you. 
Orzammar is a based and amazing city. And I think the whole district themes from Kirkwall that you like so much, Joe, can be traced back to Orzammar's districts. Plus, Orzammar has more shops in it than even Denerim, which is supposed to be our hub city. So for the first and only time, the dwarves did better than the humans. Plus, the lore of the dwarves goes crazy with the caste system, paragons, and deep roads, all of which are on full display here. And while I'm not gooning out to lore the way Barry is, I can still appreciate how hard the world building of the dwarves really is. Plus, those glorious, bodacious, expertly crafted walls with not a mage in sight is simply peak. And of course, you had to take an unnecessary shot at Mages Donald, but it was still a goaded argument. Good shit. For real boys, good work. All right, viewers, let us know your favorite city in the Dragon Age world, either in game or in lore. Our editor will respond to every comment as normal, and we will feature our favorite comment next episode. This would normally be the part where we show the featured comment from last episode, but as we said, last time we are hosting a vote in our community as to who should be the king of Orzam or Belen or Harrowmont. So we will feature the comment that swayed us the most once we reach that point in the game. You can comment on your choice this episode too. Our editor will count votes from each and every episode. If you want to see who's winning so far, guess you better check back to the previous episode. Devious engagement boosting Joe, I love it, but let's get back to the gameplay, shall we? Not too much to say. We have been clapping some castless cheeks and not the fun way like we did in episode one. This is pretty underwhelming. I can't wait to get to the good shit in the deep roads where shit gets challenging. Just got a horrible premonition in my future site. Donald, you better lock in the deep roads is going to be dire for you. First off, Joe, you're not me. You don't get anime power-ups or gamer visions. And secondly, after Flemeth's fight, I have reached my peak performance. Nothing is stopping me. So why don't you focus on your boring NPCs instead, Sleepy? Just picking up some more quests to get our money up, Donald. Well, looks like we have a small gang going on in this house. I don't think these guys know who they are dealing with either. Also, viewers off screen, I swapped Shale out for Wynn, so I got the patented Biden squad back. You know I'm cooking serious now. Unlike the dudes in the store, these guys can't be intimidated right away. But this isn't going to be anything but light work. Joe, fun fact, this is the Dwarven Commoner's home. If we pick that origin without Duncan recruiting him, he unfortunately dies in prison at the Carta hideout, again despite killing the former leader, Barat. His home turns into a small Carta outpost, regardless of origin, however. Don't you have a huge amount of opinions on the Dwarf Commoner origin, Barak? I do. A commenter from last episode kind of inspired my train of thought as well as just being here now for the main quest. But I will wait till we get deeper in the Carta hideout to talk about them. We still have a few other story beats I don't want to talk over. Joe, did you just let our wife die? You better skin each of these short guys alive starting from their toes. I'm proving a point to them by taking them out one by one, but since they surrendered and apologized, I guess I will leave them off with a warning. They gave us the key too, so we good. If this was me, they wouldn't get two sentences out for what they did to Morrigan. Good thing I'm not you then, Donald. You couldn't be as based as me if you tried. Well, thank God for that, Donald. If I was as based as you, I would be facing prison time. On my third marriage, be banned from the ballot in certain states, and most dire of all, I would have three deaths in our Dragon Age playthrough already. Damn, okay, the old man still has some hands. Well, thank God for that anyways. Joe, before we assault the base, I think the dwarf has the nug ready for us now. I think we just have to run in and out of a building for the timer to finish. Oh, so it goes off Pokemon logic, got it. Let's get this nug boy. I got him. He's all squirmy, but he's a big- Damn, boy. that is a tasty looking chicken nugget. Let me get the sweet and sour. For the last time, fat ass, we are not eating it. It is going to be Liliana's nice pet. What a waste of a perfectly good meal. What's next? You're going to put a leash on some apples. Well, time for a long dungeon. Boys better lock in, Joe. What's the password? Francis is a genius puppeteer. No, wait, that's Maple Story. Courage. Uh, no, that's Final Fantasy. Six. Uh, ice cream? Three games referenced in one line. Very cultured, Joe. Thanks, Lil D. Well, anyways, boys, we have a lot of combat in front of us now, so I think it's safe to start my rant now. So this mission here is obviously meant to be the climactic moment for the commoner origin since this is the one area the Dwarven Commoner knows well. There is, however, two problems with this origin that make it far more anticlimactic when compared to others. Oh boy, here comes another Obama hot take viewer. 
Discretion is advised, boys. We know there is a lot of fans of this origin among you. So the first issue is during this mission, we are trying to kill Jarvia. Jarvia is the new CARTA leader after she takes over the old boss Barat's contacts, utilizing the romantic relationship she had with him. The thing is, Jarvia is just a side character in the commoner origin. Sure, she is mean to us, but she is not an actual antagonist to our warden the same way Barat is. This dungeon here feels like it is supposed to be our big origin confrontation, like how Belen or how feel from their perspective origins, but Jarvia just isn't as compelling to kill. It feels like this whole mission may have been thrown in last minute just to give the Dwarven commoner some unique interactions, since the importance of this mission feels off too. I mean, yeah, the Jarvia confrontation is underwhelming, but not every origin needs a sick revenge hook to be good. The story and characters in the commoner origin are still top tier. Plus, Dwarven commoner gives an unparalleled feeling of a rags to Rich's story. You start from the bottom of society and become one of the greatest heroes of all time. That's fair. I'm not saying the origin story is bad or that it doesn't offer a good role play scenarios, however. I'm more so criticizing the main story moment this origin provides, as well as unique interactions, when compared to other origins, is significantly less impressive. Speaking of the characters, though, that brings me to my second and larger complaint. In the commoner origin, we have a temporary companion Lesky throughout the story, similar to how we had Gorham in the noble origin. Lesky was a childhood friend of us, and it was established throughout the origin that you were as close of friends as two people can be. He even promises to look after our sister when we are taken into the Grey Wardens. When we enter Dust Town as a commoner, the scene plays out differently. Instead of paying one of the castellists for information, like we did in our game, we instead would meet Lesky again, who gives us the tip to investigate our old house for the Carta. There we have the same ambush where we get the key, but the Carta grunts reveal that Lesky is actually Jarvius, right-hand man, and set up the ambush to take us down. From there, this whole dungeon plays out the same way we see it here until the final confrontation. Lesky will be with Jarvia, and give a whole plea about how he had no choice but to rejoin the Carta since he was castless and was living in constant fear of Jarvia's retribution. Their Jarvia orders him to kill us, and he does, and we are forced to kill him. I mean, to be fair, Barry Lesky does say he didn't have a choice. He was castless, he can't get a job. And with our warden on the surface, the Carta would be breathing down his neck. That does make sense. See, I'm with you there, Joe. It does make sense he would join the Carta again. However, there is no character interactions that affect this outcome. No speech check to convince him to not fight you. No character decision in the origin that convince him to not betray you. There is literally nothing you can do, and it paints him as a truly weak person or a truly evil person, as well as just being frustrating for the player since there is nothing they can do to stop it. I just think it's one of those events that has to happen for some drama. Sometimes this game does artificial drama, like that whole situation with Flemeth during Ostagar. It doesn't feel good when it happens, but it is something every game is guilty of, even a game as amazing as Origins. The fact it is a moment that feels like the conclusion of the character's arc, though, is what makes it so unsatisfying. But maybe I am just being too critical. I know Joe and the viewers like this Origin, so viewers let me know what you think in the comments below. Well, I doubt this will be as controversial as your Loghain rant, Barry. But who knows, maybe we can start a new civil war in the comments. I could use the extra entertainment. Donald, stop sounding like a supervillain. Screw you, Joe. I do what I want. Anyways, I agree with you on this. Uh, Barry, some of the Origins interactions are kind of lacking. I haven't personally done the Dalish Origin myself, but I know that besides the Tamlin encounter, which is only like three minutes of gameplay, there is not many unique interactions that the Dalish Elf gets. The clan we visit in this game isn't his own. And so while they have a few things to say, it pales in comparison to the Dwarf or Human Noble or even the Circle Mage in terms of quantity or quality interactions. It's the same with the City Elf too, if I remember right. Yeah, not all origins are made the same. I always assumed they tried to improve the Dalish Elf unique interactions in Awakening and Witch Hunt, since they get a bit of extra love in those DLCs, but City Elf and Dwarf Commoner were still left out to dry, more or less. So basically, our compromise gave us one of the best origins to play this game, and unintentionally. 
Well, sort of I would say if you want an origin that ties very well into the story of this game and changes how your game plays narratively or mechanically, Human Noble and Dwarf Noble are the top two. Hell yeah, brother, that's my boy right there. All right, well enough of the stroke fest. I am kind of clearing through these little thugs, no problem. I'm glad I kept my word about not being clapped by dwarves. These little guys are easy money for our team. Yeah, the main trick behind the Carta Dungeon is the traps. And large number of enemies, the enemies themselves, really are not any big threat to our party, especially since we are in mid-game with our items and builds starting to outpace what the game can throw our way. So just as foretold, we are just built different. I'm glad we can finally show this world of scrubs how powerful we really are. A bit dramatic, but not untrue, Donald. I have to say, I think that Orzammar is probably the best designed quest, overall gameplay-wise. The deep roads we explore later is the longest dungeon in this game, which is why most recommend you do Orzammar last. However, the quest designers made a good buffer, unlike the other main quests in this game, to naturally warn players. You start off with an easy first quest that even a warden right out Ostagar can do, because it only involves killing deep stalkers or fighting one-on-one -on -one in the proving. The next quest is a dungeon, but a smaller dungeon, then a lot of other main dungeons in this game, which is a little more difficult than the first, which acts as a natural buffer to players that, hey, if this is difficult, you may want to level up somewhere else first. No other quest in Origins gives steady progression as well, in my opinion. Design-wise, I know a lot of players don't like Orzammar because it's too long or all of the dungeons, but personally, I never found them to give that many issues. I think the dungeons are all well designed with side quests, lore, and challenging fights. Maybe I am biased because I am enjoying playing with you two losers, but Orzammar just feels absolutely peak to me. I love you too, Donald. I'm so glad we can be honest about our feelings now. Joe, get your hand off my leg. I am enjoying the game time, not your old creepy ass. You can only run from the truth for so long. Barack, change the subject again. I am uncomfortable. Sure thing, Donald. Well, remember how I said I feel like this quest was sort of thrown in last minute to accommodate the Dwarven commoner getting an end to their arc? Well, I just feel like everything we are doing here is not important to the main goal of Orzammar, which is crowning a king so they can provide us a unified army to stop the blight. I mean, the Carta is sowing chaos in the streets of Orzammar. Both Haramont and Belen say that I know they hint at it helping their election, but really the main reason was just to calm things down so that the Carta doesn't go crazy when more than half the soldiers leave for the surface during the blight. Plus, it's the right thing to do for all the business owners in Orzammar to not have to live in fear. That's a good point, Joe. I didn't consider the chaos around the city if all the guards left to fight the blight that would be weeks with nothing to check them. However, straight up killing the Carta is not exactly beneficial to Orzammar either. Now this is written in one of Varric's books, so take it with a grain of salt. But according to the book, Darktown Deal, the Carta control, a large amount of the surface trade in Orzammar and act as a connection between Orzammar and the surface as far as lyrium smuggling and surface trade goes. These functions not only allow the nobles to get surface goods they otherwise couldn't have through the black market, but the Carta helps to keep Orzammar out of the red economically. So the Carta is good for the economy, cool. But if they're still acting like assholes and shaking people down, that doesn't mean we shouldn't kill them. We are heroes and they are criminals. End of story. Donald, we absolutely should not be wiping them out. They keep Orzammar's economy flowing and the nobles happy which could only hurt the new kings, popularity among the assembly, not help it, which again is counteractive to our main goal. This mission should absolutely have an option to negotiate with the Carta or weaken them, not outright kill them. But instead, it goes to straight up obliterating the Carta. Well, at least we help out the business owners and lower castes of Orzammer. In the short term, maybe, but at the cost of a weakened economy and pissed off assembly members. What would you know about good economy, Barack? Our bro Bellin has that covered with the improved surface trade and castless joining the militia. Just sit back and relax. I guess since a lot of this information was introduced in two, maybe the Carta's importance of the smuggling and surface trade was underdeveloped initially. So we really are just curb stomping some criminals that are a threat to Orzammar. It still bugs me when a quest is mandatory but doesn't directly benefit our main goal in any way. 
we end this quest with Belen or Haromont no closer to the throne and finally get sent on a quest that will stick someone on the throne, guaranteed. I may love dungeon diving, but that's a fair point. The first quest earns the trust of our king candidate, which makes sense. Both of them are cautious, and we would need to prove we are useful and on their side before they gave us bigger work. But realistically, after we earn their trust, they should have us look for Branca, since that is all they need to become king. Still, we take out a whole criminal organization in a casual afternoon. That's a W in our warden's books. Good points, Donald. Unfortunately, this middle quest for the Carta, while good for pacing, just comes off as mid overall. Yeah, but at least it's good for our pockets, boys. Should we bring up the one and only side quest in this dungeon, boys? You mean the one you've been looking to Barack to answer since you failed economics, Sleepy? At least I didn't fail not going to prison, Lil D. Yeah, good break, Joe, to talk about it. There is a small quest called Jammer's Stash. It just entails finding three stash boxes and choosing the correct item, which is the silver ring iron letter opener and garnet trinket. Once you have all three, you can go down to a passage right before Jarvis where you can find his stash to get seven gold and the long runner's cap. It's easy gold, and with that combined with all the loot we are going to sell, at the end of this quest, we should have more than the 40 gold needed to buy the lyrium to start our true grind set next episode. That was the plan, Donald. I want to get enough money to get the life giver ring before the deep roads, and also just finish up all the side content in Orzammar before we head out as well. So we might be in a mini filler arc next episode. Oh boy, can't wait for the return of paint drying. Oh, I remember this alcove here one second, boys. Well, Donald, I'm sure you will change your tune when we have all the gold we need to not only have the squad at full build, but also have all the extra money we need for the Awakening expansion. You might be right, but you could also just have a skill issue and need to fully build out our team since you're afraid of challenge Obama. Well, why don't we let the deep roads decide who has the skill issue? Fun fact, these spiders are even in this spot when we come here during the commoner origin. I have a feeling this is set dressing to imply the Carta have a spider farm here to supply the Carta with spider venom that is my head cannon at least. That is a fun head cannon, Joe. All these Carta thugs are rogues, so that would make logistical sense, especially when you consider that this door is locked as well. Anyways, looks like you are in the final boss of the dungeon, Joe. Good luck. Just like the ogre, the two revenants, and Abomination 6406, I'm about to bend her over and maybe even defeat this boss, boys. Damn, Joe, I didn't know you were into that. I mean, she's a solid seven. I can see how she slept her way to the top. What a girl, boss. You know, there was a time I thought settling a romance would end this degenerate shit between you two. I miss the innocent man I was before this. Just wait for Tegan Drama Queen. She may be a baddie, but her villain lines need a lot of work, can't lie. That threat was underwhelming as hell. You know, I wonder if they may less betray us here so the commoner has some reason to feel some emotion during this confrontation, because Jarvia is underwhelming even in the unique confrontation. That makes sense. This girl really has to step up the antagonist game. I'm not feeling threatened at all. All right, deep breathing engaged. I've returned, boys. So Joe, just like the rest of this hideout, the actual enemies are not a threat here. They are all rogues, no mages or anything. So all you have to worry about is damage, not powerful spells or stuns. The actual threat is that Jarvia has traps placed around every inch of her back line, so you can only approach her by disarming the traps first. Even more annoying is because of how trap detection works. The traps are so close together, it is impossible to detect all of them during the fight. If traps are placed too close together, the game won't pick up more than one. So there is some trip wires we will have to avoid because we can't disarm them. That's good information, Barack, but it doesn't really matter because Joe is afraid of melee combat anyway, since he has three goddamn ranged units. So he can just pussy his way out this fight like the others. I think you mean lock into this fight, Donald. I'm straight up clapping dwarf cheeks right now. I do like the feel of this fight thematically. It really feels like these thugs are no way near as strong as our party, so they have to use traps, stealth and numbers to try to win. The other card of boss fight in Dragon Age 2's Legacy DLC has a similar feel to it. Never played it, so I will have to figure out what the hell you are talking about when we get to it. You are in for a treat that DLC is absolute gas. Yeah, sure thing, you hawk simp, but Joe, can you stop having Jarvia be in melee range of Morrigan and Liliana? I feel like she should be two-shotting them if she gets close. 
Yeah, I guess I'm getting complacent, but these Carter boys are seriously doing negative damage to us. This is free. Holy shit, Joe. Where the hell did Jarvia's health go? You're blitzing her so damn fast, I blinked, and she already dropped to last stage. Yeah, she called in more friends, but it is already too late. Jarvia is decapitated, and the Carta in Orzammar is now officially destroyed, and the remnants will retreat to the Free Marches, where we will see them in certain quests in Dragon Age 2. Nice small bit of connectivity there between the games. Oh, so that's why the Carta is there. I just always thought it was a reused asset type deal. Wouldn't blame you for thinking that, Joe, it's the reason for everything else in Dragon Age 2. We will cover our feelings on 2 when we get their boys. I just wanted to keep that connectivity in the back of the viewers' minds. Also looks like Morgan has something to tell us. Damn it, the Phantom Clicks betrayed me. Morgan, I know you have childhood trauma, but is post-exterminating a crime hideout really the best time to have the so what do we talk? It is always the best time to talk to our wife, Joe. Oh, baby, I have been with actresses, starlets, and three marriages. But I never knew what love even was till I met you, Mommy. Bro is absolutely down horrendous. Could never be me. That's Cap. It is a weakness I abhor. If this is love, I wish to ascertain that you do not feel the same. So this is where our relationship with Morrigan is going to be altered semi-permanently. This can go a lot of dramatic ways, but the goal we want is to tell her we love her back and that love is not a weakness. This comes at the cost that she won't have a sexual relationship with us until near the end of the game because she is trying to avoid catching more feelings. You are not listening to me. Do not be such a fool. She is worth our distraction and also all of my net worth. Yeah, I don't know, maybe we should just break it off and get with someone who is willing to love. Try it and no one will ever find you in time for the election, Sleepy. Both of you are goddamn psychopaths, you know that, right? Fine, fine. I cannot tell a lie. You get your goth waifu and I get my nerdy elf waifu, whatever. Twist my arm, why don't you? Morrigan, you are worth it. I would happily lose this election for you, my love. Bro is completely lost in the sauce. So this is a little inside joke that's only funny if you played the commoner origin. After killing Birat, we come barreling through his store through a tunnel. And now as a warden, we are barreling through again. This dude can't catch a break. My dude is going to lose his daughter Dagna to the surface too. You did good today, Joe. Both of Balin's favors down and we can finally enter the deep roads and get our last companion. Can't believe you still haven't gotten a death yet. We are definitely living in the wrong damn timeline. In this and every timeline Joe Biden cooks, you can't deny Lil D. Anyways, I'm going to grab our next quest from Balin and call it here. The next time we see our brother, he will either be king or he will be a stain on our boot, but that's for the viewers to decide. This is probably the first and only quest line in this game, besides the lands meet that all three of us will get to play. That's special boys. Killing Jarvia brought me greater favor, but to truly displace Harrowmont, we'll need something dramatic enough to end the debate forever. What do you know of the Paragon Branca? One last lore drop here. Bellin will suggest that if we can't convince Branca to support him that we should take her out so she can't hurt his bid for the throne, which is about as sacrilegious of a stance as you can take, Harrowmont, of course, doesn't suggest anything like this and just suggests to find her and convince her to help. That's my man, Bellin. Never let tradition get in the way of your grind. Anyways, viewers, get ready to watch me cook and make the deep roads my bitch. Soon we have the real test coming up next. We'll put Donald viewers next time. I will pick it back up and take care of all the side quests in Orzammar, including the proving, before we finally enter the unexplored deep roads. Looking at the dungeon map's length, the next three episodes will definitely be our longest yet. So we may have some slight delays as the content becomes longer. But as always, we will do our best to get content out to you every two weeks. However, if the deep roads have addled her wits, might be best she not return before the kingship is decided. Thank you, boys and viewers. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave your comment question on your favorite Dragon Age city. Our editor will feature his favorite comment next episode, as always. And don't forget to comment your king choice as well. Barry already gave a heads up on possible delays, so just be on the lookout. Until then, stay safe and tune in next time for Barry to finally recruit our final companion. But for now, it looks like Biden's blasting off again.